The major unmet needs right now in women's cardiovascular health are our relatively young women under the age of 50, particularly our non-Caucasian women. We actually are seeing a rise in cardiovascular mortality in those groups. Uh, we are seeing that they are not being screened, they're not being diagnosed, and therefore they're not being treated. Um, for probably some good reasons. They're of reproductive age, so we have to be more careful, but some bad reasons. That's implicit bias. That's assuming that they're not at risk when in fact they are. The leading killer of women at that age is cardiovascular disease. Reasons that have been identified for lower survival rates of heart attacks in women, and this is particularly true for younger women, again, women under the age of 55, is that they are less likely to be quickly diagnosed and treated. We have treatment gaps where they are less likely to be given um, the life-saving strategies that work. They work in women and men. Um, that again is uh, not following guidelines and probably due to some implicit bias on the part of the provider. Uh, we also have studied in our women's ischemia syndrome evaluation that these women are also more likely to have coronary microvascular dysfunction, something that before we started studying women we didn't really know existed or at least we certainly didn't think it was important. And we're still on the cusp of knowing how best to treat that. We think guidelines-directed therapy will work. We're actually testing that now in a large trial, but that's a knowledge gap. One of the ways we can improve the enrollment of women in clinical trials is design the trials with a female phenotype in mind. Uh, so for example, uh, make ischemia a criteria rather than obstructed coronary disease. Uh, because obstructed coronary disease is more of a male pattern, you will pick up more men. Um, microvascular um, would be a good way, ischemia related to that. Uh, for heart failure trials, we need to include heart failure with preserved ejection fraction as well as reduced. That would include more women. Um, not having uh, age caps. Many trials will not enroll over 65, over 75. That, of course, excludes women uh, with uh, female longevity. And the last strategy is to have female-only trials. And then you can't over-enroll the men. So findings of the women's ischemia syndrome evaluation, fondly called the WISE, um, which has been supported for over 20 years by National Heart, Lung, and Blood in the US, uh, demonstrated that female pattern cardiovascular disease is more often presenting in midlife women as opposed to elderly women. They have signs and symptoms of ischemia, but they have no obstructive coronary disease on angiography. And yet, uh, 20 years ago, when we did intravascular ultrasound, we profiled that they had plenty of plaque. Um, they just were negatively remodeling in a very smooth fashion, such that their coronary flow was reduced. Uh, we now can see this with CT angiograms, which are non-invasive, and uh, compared to invasive angiography, actually show us uh, not only the lumen, but the wall. And we're making additional discovery about that, uh, again, with this idea that we need to figure out how to treat this microvascular dysfunction. Will it be simple, statin and ACE, low-dose aspirin, or will it require novel or alternative technologies and treatment? So treatments that are available and evidenced by what we call pharmacologic probe trials um, are statins, particularly high-intensity statins, because they are anti-atherosclerotic and they improve endothelial function. Um, ACEs and by association ARBs, uh, because again, in these pharmacologic probe trials, not only did they improve coronary flow reserve, but they improved angina. Who knew ACEs were anti-anginal? 
Um, we uh, suggest that a low-dose aspirin is probably appropriate because one of the pathways to microvascular dysfunction is uh, capillary obliteration, uh, likely due to small microemboli. And then traditional antianginal, anti-ischemic regimens, which would be calcium channel blockers, renalazine, uh, even PD-5 inhibitors, as well as some of our novel uh, evobrinine, um, Facidil available in Japan. Uh, so uh, we have nice data now out of the Scottish Cormicra study demonstrating that testing for microvascular in the cath lab invasively and then handing that treating physician a protocol about uh, how to treat with antianginals very significantly improved quality of life angina, Seattle angina questionnaires. So we have good data. The WARRIOR trial, which is initiated a large randomized controlled trial, will provide evidence about reducing major adverse cardiac events, and that's ongoing.